Jaws of War Day 357. And uh, I've recounted, and I believe we're talking about day 11 of the Lebanon War, the Israeli War on Lebanon. And um, yesterday they killed uh, Muhammad Sarur. I believe his first name was Muhammad Sarur. He was uh, very important. Muhammad Hussein Sarur Haj Abu Saleh. Uh, he was a very important leader in Hezbollah, the commander of the aerial forces, I suspect. Uh, it was an anonymous, I believe, source, but you you guys remember some time ago, not long. I don't think it was months. It was probably weeks. It may have been months, but not too long ago, I broke uh, down an article, a long article on Hezbollah's air force, and it was based on a long interview that one of the resistance news outlets did in Arabic of one of the major leaders of Hezbollah's drone and air force efforts. I imagine it was probably Mohammed Sarur. And so that was yesterday. And that takes the death toll. I mean, the chronology is of a real shock and awe campaign, right? The pager attack on day one the walkie talkie attack on day two nasrallah trying to calm things down on day three day four the assassination of the command the military command of hezbollah basically the sheikh radwan force akil uh, wahabe and all the other high level commanders um sheikh naim Qasim, the deputy secretary general of hezbollah uh, announced the battle of open accounts or the war of open accounts. And then um, we had more and more bombings by Israel leading up to yesterday, yesterday, I believe the assassination of Mohammed Sarur. Then, so that's a whole, I mean, what's going on? How could, how could, Israel keep successfully hitting the top military leadership of Hezbollah. How could they, they have intelligence abilities that they, they've, exp they've got some, they've got some, somehow they've got Hezbollah's number at the highest level. And they're able to target these leaders. And uh, Hezbollah has not managed to get on top of that or get ahead of that to this today and it all started with the pager attack and trying to piece together exactly what it, <clears throat> what Israel knows how they could know it I, I I something tells me that it's some new signals intelligence from the Americans they broke through something maybe they broke into their phone network their fiber optic or one of their secure systems or they just have some some new tech to do with phones or something that enables them to catch um the whole leadership and kill them and they may you know i guess i guess hezbollah's air defense was in was pretty rudimentary in the sense of you know i i had been reporting on a couple of instances of pairs of F-16s being forced to retreat. That's been going on for as long as the war has been going on for a year now. And the past couple of days, I've read reports of them. But tonight um, and yesterday, there have been just bombing, continue, more or less continuous bombings by these planes using these 2,000 pound bombs all over um, southern Lebanon and all over Beirut and huge massacres in terms of, yeah, so in terms of um, location and in terms of numbers of people that have been killed. And that, of course, takes us to today. Today, when um, Israel dropped maybe 15 
or more bunker buster, one of the, more of these 2,000 pounders on an apartment complex in Dahia. And they're saying they killed the leader of Hezbollah, whose speeches I've been breaking down on this channel all year, Syed Hassan Nasrallah, the secretary general of Hezbollah. Um, so this attack, which they don't have any idea of the survivors because the bombs are so big, they brought down the apartment buildings. The survivors, I mean, not survivors, the victims were basically vaporized. There are hardly any survivors, but they have, they don't really know how they're not looking at bodies. They're not able to differentiate bodies. They, these are bunker buster bombs. They're mother of all bombs, 2000 pounders. Um, on, a, on an apartment complex. And this was ordered from the United Nations compound by Netanyahu after his speech. It's a picture of the U.S. circulated this photo of him doing that. Um, more or less proudly. So the U.N. compound was used to order... Uh, massive attack on civilians, the use of the heaviest conventional bombs on a civilian neighborhood in Lebanon, a member country of the United Nations. And this is after Netanyahu went before the United Nations and made a speech about how he was going to commit genocide in Lebanon. So the United Nations is a farce and the countries of the world seem to be frozen they seem to have just kind of had this freeze reflex the genocide seems to have frozen them and nobody seems to know what to do the best they could do was not be in the room when netanyahu gave his speech um and so you know, as I've said, I've said this many times on this channel. In fact, it was the premise of why I started these sit reps, which is because the outcome of this war is not going to be decided in the halls of the United Nations or the courts of the International Criminal Court, which also a farce. You guys remember when they issued those warrants? What are they waiting for, you think? I think they're waiting for more evidence. So that's going to be decided on the battlefield. That's what I've been saying. Now the battlefield is going Israel's way at the moment. I think we can't really deny that. Um, the past 11 days of the Lebanon war have certainly gone Israel's way and according to Israel's plan. And the only people that are trying to stop Israel are the resistance access countries and Israel is killing the strongest, the leaders of the strongest member of the axis of resistance and the member most capable of doing damage to Israel. So The threat, I mentioned this on my last sit rep, the threat that Hezbollah made of being able to target all these targets in Israel in the event of a big war, in the event that Israel were to do what it's done over the past couple of days, Israel seems to be basically saying, if you're going to do it, go ahead and do it. And... uh so it could be that his, Hezbollah's capacity to do that has been damaged over the past 11 days by taking out all these commanders, possibly compromising their communications, and possibly killing their leader. Um, it could be that Hezbollah is going to have difficulty coordinating the move to the higher tech, untested, unproven systems 
that they have, but which they haven't really used to try to pierce the Iron Dome, except in probing attacks uh, and to do mass damage on Israel of the kind, even a fraction of what Israel has done to Lebanon over the past couple days. Now, I have to address the very, I, I did want to say, very normal people in Tel Aviv are celebrating and singing songs about the death of Nasrallah, the possible death of Nasrallah. Apparently, Israeli social media is full of celebration. Uh, obviously, anyone who brings that here will be blocked quickly, so I would advise against trying that. I imagine people will, but uh, I'll deal with that as quickly as I can. If you read that here, don't bother replying. The comment won't be here for long. But yeah, while it feels like I should address this, it feels inconceivable that they could have actually gotten to Nasrallah, but it also would have felt inconceivable to me that they would have been able to get so many of the senior military leadership of Hezbollah over the past few days. The point of me saying this is we should be prepared psychologically for the possibility that his um, Nasrallah was killed. Um, if he survived um, and he pops up in the coming days, uh, the, the he'll do so at great additional personal risk, right? Which is part of why Hezbollah may not have issued any statement about the, this question in the past, in the recent hours. It could be that to do that would be to fire up various communications that are being monitored and facilitate the success of the operation that may not have succeeded yet. But if he does survive, they may get him later. Everybody's mortal. Everybody's human. And if the Americans and Israelis are fixed on killing an individual, um, you know, they have a good chance of succeeding. So they... um. Yeah, we have to we have to prepare for that possibility. Maybe it's already happened or maybe it will happen in the future. And if that's the case, those speeches that have been so um you know, that have been intended to raise the morale of people um in the resistance, they won't be uh given by Nasrallah anymore. Um they'll be given by somebody else. And uh, yeah, so Elijah Magnier reported um, that if that was the case, then Hezbollah's um, would appoint a council or the, the, there would be a council and they would appoint a new secretary general and we'd hear from them in due course. Maybe it would be Naeem Qasem or somebody else who survived. Um, that would be a prerequisite for... Uh, for be being able to continue is having being able to having survived this onslaught, which is still ongoing as I record this tonight. Um, Israel is still dropping the bunker busters. So I just wanted to, I mean, mainly I wanted to come out here and, and kind of share this moment with you all. I'm, I'm sure you all are going through it um, the same as me. And, uh, you know, there's going to be low points and, uh, this could very well be one of them. Um, let me finish, uh, let me finish the report out anyway. So when Muhammad Sarur was killed, uh, yesterday, um, it was revealed that he was actually a really important figure in the building up of Yemen's drone and missile capacities and technology. And um, so they 
they launched a missile, one of the Palestine Palestine, Palestine two missiles, ballistic missile quickly after his death to Tel Aviv and a drone to Ashkelon. They both, um, Yahya Sari said they both operations achieved their objectives. So I, I mentioned maybe um, it hit and the Israelis are saying it was intercepted. It probably did hit something. Um, and, you know, it's worth remembering how studiously the Israelis censored their losses, right? Um, there was another major announcement by Yahya Sari, which is of a, an operation in the Red Sea targeting American warships. They said they targeted American warships as they were heading out to support and assist Israel. They launched 23 ballistic and cruise missiles as well as drones in a joint effort between the Naval Air Force and Missile Forces. And Yahya Sari said, by the grace of Allah, the operation resulted in direct hits on all three warships. Uh, at the Million Man Rally, apparently Yahya Sari was there too. And he said, we say to the Palestinian people and their vi valiant resistance, Allah is with you and we are with you and by your side. We will not let you down no matter the challenges and the dangers. And another message to Nasrallah and Hezbollah. You are the owners of the first victory for the nation over the Israeli enemy. We say to Sayyid Nasrallah and Hezbollah, we are confident that you can inflict a crushing defeat on the Israeli enemy and record a new victory for the nation. Trust that Allah is with you and the Yemeni people are with you and by your side and will not forget your immortal positions with them in the most difficult circumstances. Um, one of the Ansar Allah spokesmen, Nasr al-Din Amer, said that the focus of the fifth phase of the war from Ansar Allah's point of view was in Yemen, was striking the internal front in Israel, particularly what they call their capital, Tel Aviv. Um, he said that it's pure fabrication that the Israelis intercepted their missile, their Palestine too. And he said that they've been testing for accuracy, speed, and other technical aspects, and they will intensify missile strikes in the coming days. He said, we do not fear the expansion of war, nor the strikes of Israeli enemy jets. We will not allow the resistance in Gaza or Lebanon to be broken. We are ready to fight until the last breath, and nothing will succeed in stopping us. Um, Iraq also, that's that concludes Yemen. So Iraq also yesterday had some strong words for the uh, UAE, um, the Emirates, the United Arab Emirates. Uh, Abu Alal Walai of the Sayyid al-Shuhada brigades, he said that the UAE is considered by the resistance in Iraq to be the advanced position for the Zionist entity in the Gulf, and it will be the first target of the resistance's fire if a comprehensive war breaks out. And it may have broken out. Um, the Iraqi resistance also attacked the Golan, the Syrian occup Israeli occupied Syrian Golan with drones. They said they hit a vital target with an Arqab cruise missile. So that's Yemen and that's Iraq. Gaza, there's continuous fighting in Gaza. There are reports of resistance launching rockets. There are 107 millimeter rockets against Israelis in the Netzarim corridor. There is a report of Yassin 105 hits against an engineering squad of soldiers in Khan Yunus and the destruction of a Merkava 4 tank with a Yassin 105 shoulder-launched anti-tank weapon in Khan Yunus. Another interesting message from the West Bank. There's been fighting in Nablus. And the prisoners media office from which I saw in the resistance news network prisoners telegram channel, they said the occupation forces has arrested brigadier general in Palestinian national security, Salah Abu Rabie at a mobile checkpoint. They raided his home in Al Fawar camp, south of Khalil, ransacked its contents and severely beat his brother Naaman and their son Jihad who was transferred to the hospital. So if it's Palestinian national security, it sounds to me like the Palestinian Authority 
And if the Israelis are attacking him, arresting him and attacking his home and so on, that must be another potential of defection from the Palestinian Authority. And when you see these kinds of cases, it shows potentially that the strategy that the resistance has shown of unbelievable patience towards the Palestinian Authority and refusing to take the bait and start a civil war with the Palestinian Authority forces, despite all of the provocation, does seem to bear fruit in terms of defections. And when you see that kind of thing happening, what you will also see is the Israelis attacking the Palestinian Authority, destroying its institutions. They want to do it anyway, a lot of them. But they will certainly do it more as Palestinian Authority move towards the resistance position. So in terms of Hezbollah's re retaliation, which did happen and is also ongoing. It's rockets, lots of rockets on Haifa, rockets focused on Safad. It seems like a lot of rockets focused on Safad in particular. There were lots of other bases and air defense um, or air bases, settlements that were targeted by barrages of rockets. But we have not seen the Esc an escalation in terms of the type of weaponry since the use of those Fadi 1, 2, and 3 missiles, which were area effect missiles, and the one ballistic missile from the other day. So where are we now? <sighs> Let's see. It could well be that let's just let's just project some possibilities. So it could well be that Israel's run of success continues for another little while before the resistance has a chance to recover its communication system, restore command and control, restore logistics, restore everything that's been damaged in this shock, shocking initial campaign of destruction and demoralization. If Hezbollah has been really badly degraded and if Nasrallah has been killed, we know that a lot of the other leaders have been killed already. We know that there are compromises at the intelligence level and the tech level. So if it's if the if the degradation continues to some really heavy level, then we could get to the point where we're talking about starting over. Like um Yahya Sadi says Yahya Sari, no. Yahya Sinwar says in his novel, at the end of his novel, you remember, I talked about it in a sit rep a video a little while ago, where at the end of the novel, his one of his main characters says, we have to start over. There's nothing stopping us from starting over. Um, it doesn't, the war is not going to end. There's nobody that's going to surrender to Israel from Hezbollah. The thing that Hezbollah has said, the thing that Ansar Allah in Yemen has said, and the thing that Hamas has said is we are not going to give up. We're not going to surrender no matter what you do. So they're not talking about victory. They're talking about victory or martyrdom. Right, it's a it's a jihad of victory or martyrdom. This is how a lot of their communications end, and they have faith in their victory, but a setback, a big setback, means the war goes on for longer. And it seems to me that what Israel's done in the past eleven days 
virtually guarantees that the war is going to go on for a really long time now. Assad Abu Khalil, the so-called angry Arab, said that. He said, whatever happens now, this revenge for, for these days is going to go on for years. And uh, so, so it's going to be... Yeah, if they've been really badly degraded, it that's what it means. It means there's going to be a more a, a battle that's more like the guerrilla battles that we have seen in Lebanon before. Unbelievable destruction unleashed by the Israelis and a guerrilla resistance that doesn't give up. And that's uh that could be what we end up seeing. Hezbollah had built itself up to a something more like a conventional army where it was going to look where we assumed it would look like army versus army kind of warfare but um it's uh it's possible that it's not going to look like that now it's possible that it's going to look more like a guerrilla warfare situation um while that goes on, the Gaza war goes on also as a guerrilla war, but not like a not like a guerrilla war in the sense it's it's also you're fighting co constituted military command units in Gaza too. So it's not like um every person around every corner is throwing a bomb at you, that kind of uh, total, war people's war kind of situation it that could happen as elmer john elmer has said this before he said you know if if Kassam brigades were to be destroyed that's what you would see you would see starting over as yahya sinwar says you would see the people's war starting over from scratch it's not that resistance would stop it's not that there would be anybody that would surrender but it would be starting over from a lower level of guerrilla struggle, you know, like you see in the West Bank. So these are the days where Israel has the initiative at the beginning of the war where they can strike out and they have a level of immunity, of political immunity, of international frozenness that is beyond their wildest dreams too, I think. They have been permitted everything in Gaza. And now they're taking those permission slips to Lebanon and wherever they're going to go next. Because that's the world that we live in now. And so resistance to this is is um set back it's set back and it was um we'll see what where they can we're, we'll see where hezbollah can recover back to and probably they can recover back to a pretty high level um they still have a lot going for them they have built a structure that is resilient to the loss of leaders, even so many leaders, even over such a short time, even so many at the very top. But these are not the moments when a, f a force, an asymmetric force, the weaker side shines. These are the moments where they have to absorb these blows before they can get going and start to create a situation where they're the ones choosing the time and place of the attack and where they're the ones choosing the targets and they're the ones choosing um, what, to, what to do next and taking the initiative. And right now the initiative is with the Israelis. And uh, we'll see how long the situation goes we have to hang on. And the Yemenis have said that too. They said, we will not allow the resistance in Gaza or Lebanon to be broken. 
We are ready to fight until the last breath and nothing will succeed in stopping us. So this is just the beginning. It's just the beginning. We're a year in and it's just the beginning. And uh, we have to buckle up and and hang in there. So I'll keep it to that tonight. And I'm sure the morning will reveal more. Remember, too, that, you know, you really want to know whether Nasrallah is alive, but if it would endanger their security to reveal that to the public, it's probably better. You probably don't want to know so badly that you would rather that you would have that happen, that you would have that risk taken that you would be willing to have that risk taken, let's say. So we may not find out for a while what happened, and then we may find out what happened. Um, so all we can do is hang on. So hang in there, and uh, we'll see you in the next one.